today with the sermon titled The Parable of the Fig Tree and Christ An Sang Hong. Let us find out about the prophetic time when Christ An Sang Hong came according to the Bible. Let us begin by taking a look at Matthew chapter 24. Chapter 24, verse 32. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. This scene in Matthew chapter 24 contains an important meaning. Let's go to chapter 24, verse 3. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Doesn't your coming mentioned here indicate the second coming of Jesus? The disciples asked Jesus two questions. When will this happen, and what are the various signs of the end of the age? As a response to the question, When will you come back? Jesus explained the parable of the fig tree. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. Jesus gave this teaching to the disciples. Jesus said that we need to learn the lesson from the fig tree. Therefore, we must know about it. If we do not learn this prophecy, we will fail to receive Christ, who was prophesied to come again. Thus God explained through the parable of the fig tree when Christ would come. Many people claim that they are the Christ, not even knowing the time Christ is to appear according to the prophecies. God told us not to be confused or swayed by their claims. Jesus said, many false Christs and false prophets will appear in various places. However, the true Christ doesn't come at a random time. You will be able to know the time of Christ's coming through the parable of the fig tree. Then let's study about the parable of the fig tree. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 18, it is written, Early in the morning, as he was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. A very important message is contained here. Let's continue with verse 20. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly, they asked. Verse 21, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. The parable of the fig tree is also written in Mark chapter 11. Let us read Mark chapter 11, verse 12. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. It means that it was not time for fig trees to bear fruit yet, because it was not the season for figs. 
Verse 14. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. Jesus went near the fig tree, even though it was not the season for figs. It is not because Jesus did not know whether figs grow in spring or summer or autumn or winter. But when he didn't see any fruit on the tree, what did he say to it? May you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. Everyone, do you think Jesus cursed the fig tree because he was upset that he didn't find any figs? We can understand that what he did was prophetically related to the parable of the fig tree. What does the fig tree represent? God compared the nation of Israel itself to the fig tree. In Luke chapter 13 as well, Jesus said, For three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. After Jesus Christ was baptized, he preached the gospel of the new covenant to the Israelites for three years. However, they did not accept it and ended up crucifying Jesus. Jesus prophesied about this, saying, For three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit and haven't found any. Prophet Jeremiah also prophesied that the figs represent the Israelites and the fig tree the nation of Israel. Let us look at Jeremiah chapter 24, verse 3. Then the Lord asked me, What do you see, Jeremiah? Figs, I answered. The good ones are very good, but the poor ones are so bad they cannot be eaten. Then the word of the Lord came to me. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Like these good figs, I regard as good the exiles from Judah, whom I sent away from this place to the land of the Babylonians. The exiles from Judah are the Israelites. The Israelites are likened to figs. Verse 6 reads, My eyes will watch over them for their good, and I will bring them back to this land. I will build them up and not tear them down. I will plant them and not uproot them. I will give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord. They will be my people, and I will be their God, for they will return to me with all their heart. But like the poor figs, which are so bad they cannot be eaten, says the Lord, so will I deal with Zedekiah king of Judah, his officials and the survivors from Jerusalem, whether they remain in this land or live in Egypt. Here as well, figs represent the Israelites, whether they are poor or good. Isn't the same teaching written in Luke chapter 13? In Luke chapter 13, verse 6, it is written, Then he told this parable, A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, Jesus was baptized at the age of 30, proclaimed the kingdom of heaven, and testified about the gospel of the kingdom during his three-year ministry. For three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Also, in this parable, the Israelites are likened to figs. 
as the Israelites did not accept the gospel. Although Jesus preached it for three years, Jesus likened them to a fig tree that doesn't bear any fruit. And in Matthew chapter 21 and Mark chapter 11, it is written that Jesus looked for fruit on the fig tree, but didn't find any because it wasn't the season for figs. Of course, since it was not the season for figs, it was natural that he didn't find any fruit. The reason why Jesus cursed a fig tree by the road and made it wither in the book of Matthew chapter 21 was to show us what was eventually going to happen to Israel, which is represented in the parable as the fig tree. Let us turn to Luke chapter 21, verse 20. When you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that its desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those in the city get out. And let those in the country not enter the city. For this is the time of punishment in fulfillment of all that has been written. Here, Jesus prophesied that Jerusalem would be surrounded by armies and destroyed. What events took place in Israel after Jesus went up to heaven? In AD 68, General Vespasian advanced toward Jerusalem to capture it. His army surrounded the city to conquer it. But in that same year, Emperor Nero died. Because of the death of Nero, Vespasian was forced into a position where he had to withdraw his army back to Rome. Jesus clearly prophesied, when you see Jerusalem being surrounded by armies, you will know that its desolation is near. People who paid attention to this prophecy left Jerusalem when General Vespasian withdrew his army. They came out of the city and fled to a place called Pella. However, the Israelites who remained in the city mistakenly thought that the Roman army was intimidated by their brave army and withdrew back to Rome. Later, General Vespasian became the emperor, and his son, General Titus, attacked the city of Jerusalem a second time. The attack took place in AD 70, and Jerusalem was totally destroyed. It is said that 1.1 million people were killed in the city, and 97,000 were taken captive. Jesus went to look for figs, although it wasn't the season for figs, and cursed the fig tree for not having any fruit to let us know that such a horrible event would take place and Israel would lose its sovereignty. As Jesus prophesied, the second attack was carried out by General Titus in AD 70. Jerusalem fell completely. 97,000 were taken captive, and 1.1 million people were killed in that war. 1.1 million is a great number. This great number of people were all killed. What did Jesus say? Did he tell them to fight against the army or to flee? Jesus told them to flee. All the saints of the early church believed the words of Jesus and they were able to escape the horrible disaster by fleeing to a distant place called Pella. But people who didn't believe the words of Jesus remained there and in the end, they were all destroyed. From that time on, Israel lost its sovereignty, like the withered fig tree in the parable. The Israelites lost their sovereignty, 
and became a stateless people, wandering around the whole world. Jesus prophesied this through parables. Everyone, if what Jesus did to the fig tree had nothing to do with the prophecy, is there any reason to write about it in many books of the Gospel, such as Matthew and Mark? Instead of expressing a gentle and caring statement, Jesus cursed the fig tree. We must understand that an important teaching of God is insinuated in Jesus' actions. It was to give us the answer for the parable of the fig tree. Let's continue with Luke chapter 21, verse 22. For this is the time of punishment, in fulfillment of all that has been written. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. There will be great distress in the land and wrath against this people. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. They were indeed taken as prisoners to other nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles. Until when? Until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. It means that Israel, described as a withered fig tree, can never revive until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. However, in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus already prophesied that the fig tree would revive. Chapter 24, verse 32. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get, what will happen to the twigs? They will get tender. Jesus said the time would come when the twigs of the withered fig tree get tender and its leaves come out. As soon as its twigs of the fig tree get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. This response was for which question? Didn't Jesus' disciples ask, When will you come? In chapter 24, verse 3, Jesus gave that as an answer to their question. Therefore, when the prophesied time comes, we must understand that Christ has come and that He is carrying out the gospel work. We must be able to receive Christ. Then when does Israel, the withered fig tree, regain its sovereignty? As you know, on May 14, 1948, David Ben-Gurion, the Prime Minister of Israel, proclaimed and broadcasted to the whole world the independence of his nation. He proclaimed that Israel had revived. Everyone, no country, had ever lost its sovereignty, then rebuilt it, and revived like this in human history. However, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 32, Jesus said, that the twigs of the withered fig tree would get tender and its leaves would come out. Jesus already prophesied that it would revive. Israel's sovereignty was restored and its independence was officially recognized by the whole world on May 14, 1948. It is astonishing. Nobody expected it. Sovereignty, which had been lost for nearly 2,000 years, was recovered and the nation was restored. This was an extraordinary event that had never happened before. This history took place in accordance with the providence of God, only to fulfill the prophecy of the Bible. It was not a result of human efforts. In order for us to know that Israel would regain its sovereignty about 1900 years after it was lost in AD 70. Jesus said, the twigs of the fig tree will get tender 
and the leaves will come out. And when you see this prophecy being fulfilled, you know that the Son of Man is near, right at the door. Then what other events in regard to the truth, through a spiritual point of view, took place in 1948? Is in 1948, the year Father An Sang Hong was baptized and began fulfilling the remaining prophecy of the throne of David? To fulfill the prophecy of the throne of David, he preached for three years at his first coming, and he appeared a second time in 1948 to preach for the remaining 37 years. According to the prophecy of King David, Father had to be baptized at the age of 30, and he was 30 years old when he was baptized in 1948. A prophecy is something that can never be altered by men. Once God sets and determines a certain course, no one can change the course as they please. At his first coming, he proclaimed the truth of the new covenant, according to the prophecy of David. But after preaching the new covenant for only three years, he went up to heaven. Therefore, to fulfill the remaining 37 years, he came again a second time in 1948, was baptized in December, and began to fulfill the prophecy of the throne of King David. The year 1948 was when the twigs of the fig tree got tender and the leaves came out as Israel became independent. These events took place in the same year. The Bible prophesied, when the twigs of the fig tree get tender and its leaves come out, who is nearby? Second coming Christ has arrived at the door. Truly, this is an amazing prophecy. Father was baptized in the same year and he left this earth in 1985 after completely fulfilling the remaining prophecy of 37 years of the throne of King David. Everyone, there are so many false Christs and false prophets in the world who claim that their doctrines are true. However, there is no one who came to this earth according to the prophecies of the Bible and went up to heaven according to the prophecies, except Father An Sang Hung. We should preach our Christ, who is surely testified by all the prophets in the Bible, like the saints of the early church, by saying, if you want to be saved in this age of despair amid the COVID-19 pandemic, believe in Christ An Sang Hung, believe in Heavenly Mother. We must be able to testify about them boldly. As was prophesied by Prophet Micah, Father became the king in Zion, walking the last gospel path for 37 years. He taught us everything, especially the teachings about Heavenly Mother, who was the wife of the Lamb before ascending back to heaven. Truly, our Father An Sang Hung came to this earth according to the prophecy of the fig tree. Furthermore, as we all know well, Father didn't come alone, but together with Heavenly Mother, just as it is mentioned in Revelation chapter 22. When the disciples asked Jesus, When will you come? He answered, The Son of Man will come when the twigs of the fig tree get tender and its leaves come out. Then you will know He's at the door. He let them know when the Lord will come. Let's take a look at a prophecy in Revelation chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 20. This is a letter for the angel of the church in Laodicea. The mission of the church in Laodicea was fulfilled by the Seventh-day Adventist church. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Who is prophesied to knock on the door of the church in Laodicea? 
it is the Christ who comes a second time. God said, there will be the one who will be knocking on the door when the twigs of the fig tree get tender and its leaves come out. Father Christ An Sangong came to this earth to explain every detail in the Bible, to lead us into the truth of the New Covenant Passover and to establish Zion, where the feasts of God are kept. He opened the glorious way to the everlasting kingdom of heaven. He is our father, An Sang Hong. Let us take a look at one more verse in Isaiah chapter 25. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 6. In verse 6 it is written, On this mountain the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. And what will he swallow up? He will swallow up death forever. Doesn't destroying death forever mean giving eternal life? The only wine used to destroy death forever and give eternal life is the Passover wine. Then doesn't it mean that He will bring the truth, the new covenant Passover, when He comes to this earth? The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of His people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. What did we do? We trusted in Him. We have waited for Him since His first coming. Until when should we wait? When will you come? When the twigs of the fig tree get tender and its leaves come out, you know that the Son of Man has arrived at the door. Up until now, we have waited for Him, since we waited for the time that the twigs of the fig tree would get tender and its leaves come out, He will save us. And He saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in Him. Let us rejoice and be glad in His salvation. Here, God showed a prophecy when all people shout for joy, saying, This is our God. He came, revealed the truth of the Passover wine, which couldn't be opened for a long time, and swallowed up death. To carry out this work, God said that He would come when the twigs of the fig tree get tender and its leaves come out and knock on the door. Who fulfilled all this? As we know, didn't Christ An sang fulfill them all? Heavenly Father Christ An sang came to this earth according to the parable of the fig tree, proclaimed the truth of the new covenant, restored Zion, the city of the feasts, and led us to Heavenly Mother. Let us all, the children of Zion, engrave this truth deep in our hearts and boldly testify about father and mother. Some may say, I preach, but people don't listen. Everyone, we are not responsible for that. Our role is to preach whether they listen or fail to listen. God has His plan. When God tells us to do something, we just need to do it. We don't need to care about how people look at us or wonder, will they listen? Since God told us to preach, our mission is to preach. When we preach, God will make things change. Asking you to bear many beautiful fruits of the Holy Spirit, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.